Picture this. You spent your life right from your first breath in captivity. Kept in a room with little to no light. Facing a wall with your legs and neck chained. Unable to move, not seeing anything other than the shadows of the objects that pass behind your back. Those shadows are your reality, for they are all you've ever seen. The room where you've been held is what you call home, as it's the only place you've ever been. Now think, if given the opportunity, would you be willing to escape this room, to step out of captivity, out of your home, into the bright lights, and into an environment where you've never been before? What would your reaction be if you were told that the shadows were merely an illusion? The reality was much different from what you had come to think of it. And consider this too. Once you've accepted your new reality, once you've grown accustomed to your new environment, to the sun and the fresh air, to being free, would you ever be willing to return? Plato's allegory of the cave describes prisoners chained together in a cave. Behind the prisoners is a fire, and between the fire and the prisoners are people carrying puppets or other objects, resulting in shadows of the objects being cast on the other side of the cave. The prisoners watch these shadows, believing them to be authentic. Plato then speculates what would happen if one of the prisoners could become free and was finally shown the fire and the truth about the shadows. This prisoner could escape from the cave and discover a whole new world outside that he was previously unaware of. This prisoner would then believe that the outside world was so much more real than the one he was accustomed to in the cave. He might try to return to free the other prisoners. Upon his return, he would be blinded because his eyes are now accustomed to actual sunlight. The chained prisoners would notice this blindness and believe that they will be harmed too if they try to leave the cave. This allegory has captured the imagination of people across professions, ranging from students of philosophy and political scientists to filmmakers. While interpretation is open, as different people may see the same story in a different light, the most common perspective is viewing the allegory as the journey of an individual, from ignorance to knowledge symbolizing the rise from living by belief to living by intellect. Like the prisoners in the cave, we live our lives in bondage to superficialities, putting the shadows on a pedestal and having no regard whatsoever for substance. Be it newspaper headlines, television screens or our smartphones, we are blinded by our ignorance and never seem to search for the truth. Motivated by greed and the quest for power, we chase instant pleasure instead of striving for meaning and value. We live in a time of corruption in political life and a decline in personal integrity. Our only hope lies in recognizing the shadows of what they are so that we can find a way out of the cave. But is this the idea that Plato had in mind when he wrote the allegory? It's hard to believe to say the least. The allegory of the cave is found in the Republic, a book written by Plato to lay down his vision of what an ideal government would look and act like. So it would be safe to assume that the allegory has more of a political significance than is generally understood. A deeper reading would point out that through the allegory, Plato wishes to represent the corrupt political condition of the cities at the time, specifically Athens and also the opposition that philosophers have to encounter from such corrupt governments as they try to enlighten and educate the masses, who are ignorant and refuse to be led out of the cave. He wishes to show how a government led by philosopher kings would help the masses break free from their shackles, recognize the illusions for what they are, and lead a life led by intellect and knowledge, not belief and opinion. Plato believed that in an ideal state, there must be a union of philosophy and political order, and thus, with the cave, Plato intends to represent a political community deprived of philosophic rule. The people chained and unable to move are meant to symbolize the corruption of existing states in which philosophy and political authority are divorced. 
Only upon the training and guidance of a philosopher king can individuals realize their highest potential. Only in such an ideal state can true justice be achieved. Plato believes that living without such guidance is contrary to nature for the citizens. And any state that does not have this union of philosophy and politics in existence will only corrupt and miseducate its citizens. He argues that philosophic rule is the precondition for realizing the social and educational structure described in the Republic. Having received such training and guidance by the philosopher ruler, the citizens then ascend to a higher level in the cave, from ordinary to ideal. These citizens have been made as good, as close to an ideal citizen as is possible. An ideal citizen who understands the significance of the philosopher king, participates in the political order and contributes to the state as is expected of them. At this higher level, the inmates have been released from the shadows and are free within the cave. They have broken free from ignorance and can now see the truth. No longer do they have to believe the shadows to be authentic. With this, Plato intends to contrast the disparity in well-being between ordinary city-states and his ideal city. The allegory showcases that the philosopher ruler transforms the life of his subjects, similar to the transition from seeing shadows to seeing the fire and the objects from which the shadows are formed, from being bound to being free within the cave. Therefore, the cave serves to express a profound truth for Plato, namely that while most citizens as individuals might not be capable of being philosophers and making the journey out of the cave, the character of their lives depends upon the nature of the community. Plato believed that a kind of communal enlightenment could be realized in cities subject to philosophic rule. The citizens might not be able to leave the cave, but light still enters their lives in the form of the person or the philosopher who has seen the good, who has been outside the cave. And as the cave reveals, their condition then is transformed as that of men who see objects having previously seen only shadows. The cave shows us that the evils of our condition, our ignorance, corruption and superficiality arise because philosophy is divorced from political authority and ordinary cities. This disorder could be redeemed only by philosopher's rule. Through the allegory, Plato shows us an image of our corruption by demonstrating how far away we are from the ideal and natural condition. We learn about the duality of human nature. We might be wicked and despicable because our lives are distant from the ideal. But by nature, we still are glorious rational beings capable of imitating perfection. Plato contrasts our predicament in the cave with our natural condition. His vision of delivering us from our problems is an ideal community, symbolized by harmony and led by philosopher king so that the limitations of the individual are transcended as they participate in the perfection of the political whole. This is how he believes we can overcome corruption and evil and attain the higher good. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more thought provoking content. And here are some more philosophy related videos that you might find interesting.